Story class, and my name Black Rasta. Our elders say until the lion learns to tell his own story, the tale of the hunt would always glorify the hunter. That is why it is most prudent, most important for us to tell our story. We have had his story, her story, time now to tell our story. The truth, the truth side of the story, the most authentic side of the story. This is the African history class. And today I'm taking you all the way to Brazil to tell a story that is going to uproot you hook, line, and sinker and replant you in another world. Our king's men suffered in the days of slavery. They were carried across the length and breadth of the universe. And everywhere we found ourselves, we made history. Some of it has never been told. Some of it, today we are telling, and more will continue to come out as we continue to research. Today, I am looking at the story of a man who was born in 1828, in the 19th century, and he was called Rog Jose Florencio. Rog Jose Florencio. But, Later in life, he was simply known as Pataseca. Pataseca. He was born in Brazil in an area known as Sorocaba in Sao Paulo. And when he was born, at birth, he was a smiling baby. He never cried. In fact, even when he was hungry, he only giggled and his mother knew that it was time for him to eat. He grew up into a very, very able-bodied black man, dark in complexion, and he stood at seven feet two inches tall. He was thick tall. He had bulging muscles, and he naturally liked to work. He was a healthy young man. Unfortunately, by the age of 18, he was captured and sold into slavery by a man by name Joachim Jose de Oliveira. Joachim Jose de Oliveira. He captured him and sold him into slavery. 18 years. He was into slavery. He worked very hard in the plantations of Brazil. He was a hard worker. By the age of 20, Joaquim Jose de Oliveira realized that this was a very handsome slave, very hard working, and he served his master perfectly well, beyond his expectations. He spoke well, and most importantly, he was extra intelligent. So he started thinking. He needed more slaves, but it was expensive in those days to just buy slaves. It was better for him to breed slaves. So the idea came into his mind to use our hero for today, Pataseca, as a stud. S-T-U-D. A male used in breeding, in producing children. So he called him to his side and told him that this is what I want you to do. Pataseca didn't like the idea, but he served his master. And you would be very, very much shocked to hear this. 
he decided to escape because he was told that he was going to be used as a star. He didn't believe in that. He was able to skip the wall and run away. But as he was out there, the sun in the area which had been the, become a desert, which had become a desert, the heat alone made him run back and quickly he was arrested. His master, Joachim Jose de Oliveira, became very angry and said two things. I either kill you now because you tried to escape several times or I ask you to accept to be that start that I wanted you to be. And he agreed. Every day, 200 women were brought to him and he serviced all of them, one after the other, from morning all the way through the next morning. 200 women. At that time, Joachim Jose de Oliveira did not know exactly when a woman got pregnant or when a woman was likely to get pregnant. He only knew that when a man slept with a woman, she got pregnant. And therefore, he didn't look at the timetable or the biological table or the calendar of the woman. Pushed the women. Every day, 200 women. And our hero for today, Pata Seca, will service each one of them. He continued to do that. Now this relationship was able to produce at least 249 children within that period. His master loved him. He asked him not to work in the plantation anymore. Just lie down. You'll be fed with the best food, the same food your master eats, so that you get the energy. Sleep. Relax your body. He was even massaged so he would get enough energy to be able to service the 200 women he was given almost every day to service. Interestingly, it came to a time that Pataseka was so, 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 so much angry that he tried yet another escape. But he realized that every eye was on him. So he started to let the slaves, the other enslaved people, escape. He was pushing them out and they were escaping, escaping. And they escaped to a place known as Quilombos. They built what is today known as the Quilombos community. Built by slaves, just like the Maroons of Jamaica and beyond. These were the Maroons of Brazil in the Quilombos community. A lot of them were his own children. Despite the fact that he slept with so many different women and he breeded a lot of them. He took notice of every child that he bore with the women and he took very good care of them as if he intentionally fathered them. Look at this interesting thing. One day he walked over to his master and told him, I feel so lazy that all I do is to service women. I want to do other things. He said, okay, then you take care of the horses. So he will take care of the horses. The doctor will be called in to take care of him personally so that he will busy himself making more babies. After a time, he told himself that enough was enough. So what did he do? There was a lady he saw. Listen to this interesting thing. Out of the 200 women brought to him almost every day to service, there was one lady that he saw and he liked so much. In fact, he spent a lot of time with this woman. She was called Palmyra. Palmyra was a herbalist. She knew almost every herb. She was also brought all the way from Africa. And she was using these herbs to take care of this man called Pataseka. Pataseka found a way of making Palmyra escape and go all the way to the Quilombos community where she was treating the other escapees with her herbs. Watch this interesting thing. Pataseka decided that it was time to say bye-bye to his master because slavery had been abolished 
1888 in Brazil. Hallelujah. When slavery was abolished, he walked over to his master and said, Well, master, we are no longer slaves technically. And it's time now to move. The master said, You have served me so well. I give you this piece of land. Take it yourself and put it to good use. He decided to call that piece of land Sitio Pataseca, the place, the farm, the land of Pataseca. He started to plant a lot of different products and crops. On top of the agenda was the planting of rapadura. Rapadura is unrefined sugar. He planted sugarcane and he turned that into rapadura. My God. Interesting. So now, he himself moved to Quilombos and was with the rest of the people. They formed their own black community. Today, when you go to Brazil and see a lot of black people all over the place, you have to give credit to one of our greatest heroes, Pater Seca. Yes, he was forced to sleep with so many women, but he took note of every child that he bore. He took care of them as if they were the only children he had. That is why today in Brazil, there are so many people who see him as a national hero. His statues are all over Brazil. And the 13th of June is celebrated as Pataseca Day. Pataseca himself died in 1958, a year after the independence of this nation, at the age of 130 years. What could be the secret to his longevity? Was it the pine, 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 pine? Or was it the food he was eating? Or probably the herbs that his wife Palmera fed him on? Should I tell you something more? Despite all the 200 women he was giving almost every day to service, he was married to only one woman, Palmera. What a man. One woman. And with Palmera, they had nine children, powerful and strong. Today, this is the father of all the stars. He died in 1958 and was buried at a place called Santa Eudoxia. Santa Eudoxia, where his monument still stands. So many streets in Brazil are named after him and some other such outfits. Today, we remember the man. Oh yes, Pataseka. Today we remember Pataseka, powerful man who was born in 1828 as Rogue Jose Florencio. He became one of our topmost celebrities. He was. Today we remember you, Papa. He died at the age of 130 in 1958. Papa, today we remember you. Papa, uni yaminko. Papa, uni yaminko. Uni wate. Oh, Papa, why yebi? Papa, why yebi? Papa, why yebi? That is why when our ancestors pray, there's a prayer that they always say. But these days, when we pray, we don't say that. You know what our ancestors used to say? Maya Kotinya Day. Maya Kotinya Day. Maya Kotinya Day. Three times. Give us a powerful manhood. Give us a powerful manhood. Give us a powerful manhood. When they pour libation. Maya Kotinya Day. Maya Kotinya Day. Maya Kotinya Day. Three times. Because a man without that powerful tool. In the days and even now may not be seen as a complete man. This is the story of Papa Seka. Oh Papa, Uri Yaminko, Uri Yaminko Wate, Mesu Uri Yaminko, Papa, bye bye you, bye bye Uri Yaminko. Oh, that we forget, Papa why be, why be? In the burden of knowledge, I asked you. Now that you know. What would you do? Be an any Olea Mini Obafe and Zunda Kagani, 
Prisa kaji ne ye ay papa ngo boka ya nung fifi ya ye nyandu kai na wo. Bana e uwe be deng lele ya njima singa be kone. Lele ya njima singa be. It's been the African history class. And my name, Black Rasta. Ila ila chinde la lenyo, ila mu ama benda bato mu, benda bi pete pete kaba wela ne, Jesus bi ngene ngene kaba wela no. Jesus, you're my only one.